everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So this week we're continuing in with our kind of shorter, quick tip series here for the summer. And um, so this week what I'd like to talk to you about is motion paths. So let's just go ahead and do this. I'm going to create a drawing layer that we can use here. Um, let's just create a square uh, for no particular reason. And um, now for this drawing, um, what I'll do to show this is I will show it on a peg layer. And I'm just going to use a peg layer so that I can show you the difference between when you're doing a 3D path and when you're doing a separate. So let's start with the scenario of doing it with separate because separate is um, more simple and then we can come back and talk about 3D path. So when you have your peg set as separate, let's just put a couple of keyframes on this. So we'll have a keyframe over there and then we'll have a keyframe where it moves over to the right and then we'll have a keyframe where it moves up. If I look at this path, when you have a separate defined it's a very linear um, interpolation between the two. So in other words, when I move from left to right, it moves simply from left to right in that direction, and then when I turn up, it's gonna move up. If you choose to show the path on this, and this is one of those things I like to use my toolbar for. I go to Windows Toolbars, and then I'll add my Camera View Toolbar, and this is one of the tools in there. It's called Show Control. It's also something you can get to by going to View, Show, and then Control. And it does have this shortcut here, um, Apple F11, um, or you know whatever the shortcut is on Windows. But I tend not to like to use this shortcut because it does that weird Mac like exploding desktop thing for me. So, um, so instead of that, I like to use the toolbar here. And if it's not on your toolbar already, you can right click on that area there to the left of the toolbar and customize it, and make sure you add that in there. So once you've got that, show control, and then the other one is hide all controls so that you can easily hide it. I find these buttons really handy. I don't know why I'm a button person. I just it's a personal preference, but I prefer buttons to um to shortcuts be in in some cases because um you know, it's a visual thing. It's really quick to click on. Some people prefer shortcuts. It's up to you. Okay, so let's click on this path now. We'll 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 click on the one of the keyframes in the peg layer and then we can click on show path and then it shows you the path in between the two. Now, with a separate path it's always a linear interpolation and you can't adjust the curvature on the path in between the two. That is something that's just, you know, stuck the way it is. So if you wanted to have it do something in between, you have to add another keyframe and so on and so forth if you wanted this to be a kind of a curved path. Now, in the case where you really want it to be a curved path, I would not use a separate what separate I think is useful for is if you're doing a lot of rotations instead of movements. Like cutout characters, for most of their limbs and stuff, you're going to be rotating those. You might do a bit of skewing and squashing and stretching, but not too much movement on a path. So for things like characters, um, you can use the separate. For things like camera moves, it depends. Is it a 3D flying camera move? If it's yes, then you want to use a 3D path. Is it just a straight... Are you going to just zoom in and then pan over? If you're just going to zoom in and pan over, you might want to use the separate instead of the 3D path. So now that we're talking about 3D path, let's switch to a 3D path. When you do switch from one to the other, there are different types of keyframes, so you kind of lose the positioning on those keyframes. So I'll just redo the keyframes. I'll have this guy over to the left. I'll have um, that go over to the right, and then I'll move it up a bit. So you can see right away, when you do the 3D path, it creates a curve between those two. So it's just gonna do a nice, beautiful curve. And this works really well when you wanna do a flying camera move, like a camera that's quite literally flying through your scene. It's useful for when you have birds, if you have a bird flying through the scene. Anything that's flying through your scenes, not touching the ground, 3D Path is really great for that. Um, the other thing is, though, that there are various different options <clears throat> for these guys that you can work on. So to show the different options, you want to show Windows toolbars and then you've got control point and the control point toolbar gives you some information that you can work with. Um, these are keyframes that I have selected here. Each one of these guys, um, when it has a cross in the center of it, it indicates a keyframe. And so when you actually select a keyframe, it's got this option there locked in time. And, um, you know, so if you want to do a constant keyframe, it's going to just really, it's going to snap from one to the other. That's like your stop motion keyframe, kind of. Um, but if I turn that off, then the other thing is that you might have, you might want to add what we call a control point in between the two. 
And so the way that you can do that is you can mouse over your path and you can hit the P shortcut. Um, I think you need to make sure though that the focus, the red outline is around your camera view. And then you mouse over your path and hit P. And then when you do, that creates a control point. So some people say to me, well, you know, I like to use the 3D path and or I use the 3D path by mistake, but I hate this curve and I want to get rid of it. One of the ways and really quick and easy ways of getting rid of it is just to create that control point and then just drag the control point right, ne right next to your keyframe. And then that's going to create a straight line between the two. Frankly, I think that's the easiest way because then you don't have to adjust any of the values here for tension, continuity, and bias. I will explain those in a second there, but um, the other thing that a control point is useful for is for um, shaping the path in between two keyframes. The difference between a control point and a keyframe is that a control point is locked in time, or sorry, a keyframe is locked in time, and a control point is not. So for example, if you take this control point, each one of these ticks here represents one frame in time. And I can slide that across the ticks. Whereas when I take this keyframe and I drag it, it's not sliding across the ticks. The ticks are staying, you know, where they are. I'm just moving the position of this keyframe in space. So that's an important distinction to understand. You can take a control point and you can check locked in time, and when you do, it turns it effectively into a keyframe, and in fact, it also shows up in your timeline as a keyframe. So then you can select it again and uncheck locked in time, and now it becomes a control point again. So that's the first thing, but what about this tension, continuity, and bias stuff? Well, these are some values that you can adjust here, and it adjusts the shape of the path there. So you could put the tension at 1, and it's going to be like a straight path between the two lines. Um, so that's for the tension. Continuity is, um, it's going to give you these sort of humps, like a, like a sharp corner. If we, let's zoom in on this one. So you see it's creating that sharp corner when I put it at 1. If you put it at minus 1, it's going to do a sharp corner in the other direction. Um, 0 is just going to be a nice curvy line. And then bias will shift it to the right or to the left of the, of the keyframe. So it shifted the, 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 the shape of the curve to the right when it's at 1. And then when it's at minus 1, it's going to shift it all the way to the left. So these things are a little bit tricky to, to work with. So I prefer to just work with control points. And, um, and then if you want to adjust like where these ticks are taking place, that is what you adjust with your ease, which is something that I did a tip of the week on last week. So you adjust the, the timing with the ease and the shape with the control path. So hopefully that helps out to clear up a little bit of confusion. I really suggest that you guys try out this trick about just dragging the control point right next to the keyframe if you ever do get stuck um, with that 3D path. And I'll see you guys next week.